Hello, my name's Mike and I'm from Access Irrigation. And in this video, we'll be looking at underground valve chambers and especially the solenoid valves that go inside them. And in this one, we'll be looking at the 24 volts or mains powered controllers. Now, how do you know it's 24 volts? Well, you'll have the same colored wires. So you'll have two red wires and these are powered at 24 volts AC. So each controller will have a transformer inside to step down the mains voltage to a safe working voltage. So these are Hunter PGV type valves. And the beauty of these is you can add pressure regulation to them at the valve itself. How you do that is by putting on an AccuSync. An AccuSync is an adjustable pressure regulator, uh, regulator and it fits on to generally to drip line. When you, you need to step the uh, pressure down, you'll put it on a drip line zone. And how do you do it? Quite simply, you undo the solenoid itself and you'll pop that on and then you'll screw the solenoid back again, keeping the wires out of the way and you'll tighten that up tight. And once it's tight, you can move that around and then play around with your adjustment via the regulator itself. Okay, let's look at the wiring. Now, you'll notice that we've got two red wires. They are not polarity dependent. In other words, it doesn't matter which way round we wire these. There will always be a trigger wire. So for number one, we'll use one wire. Number two, we'll use a specific wire. Number three, we'll use the specific wire and, and number four and so on. We'll also be linking all of the other wires to the uh, common. So one is common on each of them, and then one is specific to the valve number itself, number one, two, three, and four. Okay, so we've got a lot of wires here. Now don't cut them down too short, because if it's an underground chamber, you really want to, if you've got to do anything, you want to be kneeling down and pulling the wires out rather than uh, groveling in into the chamber itself. So what I do is I just take a little bit off the ends. So if I grab them all and I just take I don't know, about 150 mil off the ends of each one. And pop those to one side. Now in an underground chamber, you're going to be wiring with a signal cable. The signal cable will run with the supply pipe and it'll come into each chamber. So I've got a, a six core cable here, which we generally use. Just be careful when you're wiring a six core cable because there'll be a white filler and you don't want to be wiring into the filler, otherwise it won't work at all. So there's our filler. Let's cut that off straight away so we don't get confused. And on a six core cable, it's really simple. The way I do it is to I take a red, yellow, green, and blue, put the others to one side, and then I'll wire red to my first valve, yellow to the next one, green to the next one, and blue to the next one. So you can do it any way you like, but it makes it simple when you go back to your panel to make sure that you actually got um, you know, the, the correct colors when you're wiring to it. I then take my black or my white and I'll use that as my common. So let's have a go. So I'll take the first, let's do the trigger wires first of all. So I'm going to use my red for my number one. So I'll take one of my wires from my um, cable and I'll use a grease crimp connector. The beauty of a grease connector is I don't have to bear any wires um, and it seals it. There's a silicon grease in there. So when it's, uh, when it's uh, crushed down, then it will seal it straight away. So if I have a look, if you look at the back of it, I can feed my wires in and I can actually see whether my cables have gone fully in. Okay, then fully in. Always use a pair of grips to tighten them up and you need to make sure that it's sealed well down. Really make sure that's nice and firm, and you can even give it a bit of tug to make sure. 
Okay, that's number one. Let's take number two. And I'm going to do that to yellow. So I'll do the same again. Make sure the wires have gone fully in. And then I'm going to squeeze them together. Simple now. I'll take the next one. And I'm going to do that to green. And just make sure they're fully in. Oops. And then tighten those together. Make sure it's firm and the grease, you'll see the grease is squeezed in them when you look at it. And finally, the last one going to blue. Okay, so now I've got one wire from each of these solenoid valves to my red, yellow, green, and blue. So now it's a real simple case of taking the other wires from valves number one and two, and I'm gonna wire those into the black. So I've got three cables, unfortunately, my uh, grease crimp has also got three entry points. Don't put two cables into one of these holes. They're specifically designed to have one cable only in there. So, tighten that up. And lastly, the two wires from there. And they're gonna go on our remaining white wire. I'll pop those in. So, right, they're all nice and tight. I can see that that's all connected. I now have no loose wires. Before, I would always take this up, but before I do that, I was always check that they work correctly. So before you do any tidying up, uh, always go back to the controller uh, and, and do it. So what you'll have is red will go to number one, uh, Yellow will go to uh, number two, green will go to number three, and then blue to number four, and then the, the black and the white wire will go to the common. So you've got two wires going on to the common there. So there you go, really simple to do. Um, if you want to manually open any of these valves, you can twist a quarter of a turn the solenoid itself, or you can open the bleed screw, which is at the back. That's an easier way of doing it because you don't really want to be playing with any anything that's got wires on it. So there you go. 24 volts AC manifold all wired and ready to go.